Last year I passed the CISP exam to become CISP certified and I want to share all the different things that I used in terms of books, courses and apps and stuff. The CISP exam has a 20% pass rate and I passed my exam on my first attempt. So hopefully some of the stuff that I'm going to show you here will help you if you're going for your CISP exam in 2024. The biggest thing you need to know about the CISP exam is the exam outline and that's where we're going to start. Now instead of me running through the CISP website, you can easily just go and read that. I've broken it down and I'm going to tell you just the bits that you need to know and then you can just go to the website after and just read all the rest. So the current exam outline will actually expire on April 4th. 14th 2024 so if you're doing the exam before then then this information is going to be relevant for you so the exam questions are based on the eight domains again you can check the website it's going to give you those details the current exam has between 125 and 175 questions and how it works is that if you don't pass the exam by 125 then that will just continue on to 175 it just gives you that extra 50 questions and hope that you pass the exam it's multiple choice. In terms of time, it's four hours long. The exam uses the computerized adaptive testing, which is known as the CAT, and that is in the English exam only. So what it does is that the first half of your exam, it will ask you a whole bunch of different questions from across all the different domains, and it will find your gaps, it will find the bits that you don't know, and then it will continue pushing you on those areas. And it's one of the reasons why the exam has a 20% pass rate, is that it finds the bits that you don't know, and it will keep pushing you on them. So this is why, you cannot afford to skip any of the domains or skip any, any bits of your studying at all. The exam also comes with 50 pre-test items. So what that is, is that is questions that you're gonna get in your exam included in the initial 125. That's 50 questions that don't count towards the final points, which is tricky as well because you could be sitting spending three four minutes on a question that might not even be counted so you need to be aware of that as it stands you can't take the exam online from home you have to go to an authorized testing center i would say it's not for everyone and um, this is definitely a leadership CISO level exam so if you're into hacking and things like that then this exam may not interest you too much because it is so high level to get certified after you've passed the exam you need to have five years experience across two or more domains if you have done like a four year degree or another certification, then that can qualify as one of the years. If you don't have enough experience to get to become certified after passing the exam, you can become an associate of CISP and then you can build that experience and then apply to become fully CISP certified. In terms of cost, it is a little bit more expensive than the other exams, like say Microsoft or Cisco exams. The exam cost me £585. So that's $750 or 665 euros, but you also pay 20% tax on that. So the total cost to me for the exam was 705. So whenever you pass the exam, you have to pay 125 pounds to become certified and that's a yearly membership fee. Um, and then in terms of studying, the courses and books and apps that I bought amounted to about 400 pounds. All in all, the total price for the CISP certification exam cost me about £1,230. If you're doing the exam from April 15th, 2024 onwards, then there is a different outline for that exam. Some things have slightly changed. The exam questions are still gonna be based on eight domains. The domain weight has changed. I will show you that in a second. The number of questions has changed. So in the new exam, you will get between 100 and 150. Same process. If you don't pass by 100, then the CAT exam will push you on to 150. Um, Time-wise, it's reduced from four hours to three hours. Now that is that is the worst point. That's the I think time in the exam was the trickiest thing for me. For the domain weight changes, the security and risk management has went from 15% to 16%, and then the only other change is the software and development security. So that's dropped from 11% to 10%. To show you some of the different things that I used to pass the exam, I would say you need to use a range of different material so video courses books apps try to get a good broad amount of material so you can absorb as much information as you can i watched the linkedin learning course by mike chapel that was actually a really good course and it was the first thing that i did in my study uh, and it gave me a really good idea of all of the domains in terms of books i bought five different books so i bought the assist official study guide so that's the cybex study guide that's actually was actually this one this was the one that i used the whole way through the exam i highly recommend it i also bought the official cisp cbk reference guide you don't really need to buy that this book should be enough 
I also bought the official CISP practice tests. Again, it was okay to buy, but I don't think you really need that. You can use the Learns app or maybe another app as well. I also bought the 11th hour CISP on how to think like a manager for the CISP exam. So those two books I would highly recommend. For apps, those apps are, these are the apps that will give you all of the questions and practice questions and stuff like that and you'll do practice tests. The Learns app is the official app that goes along with this book. Um, and the good thing about the app is that if you get a question wrong, in the app it actually tells you which chapter in this book that you need to go and read up the answer and whenever I was going through the questions that was brilliant I would write down all of the different things that I was getting wrong and I would spend time reading on the chapters this book also comes with a question bank a whole bunch of different practice questions now some of the questions in that bank are similar to what you get in Learns app I also watched a whole bunch of different videos on YouTube just typed in CISP and watched down literally a lot of the different videos but three videos in three different places I can definitely recommend is Pete Zerger has an eight hour exam cram. I watched that like five or six times the whole way through and um, that was really really good. He also has supporting documentation in the description of the video so that was like powerpoints and all of the slides from his video so even if you don't have time to watch all of the videos get those links and get those documents so you can just download them to your phone and stuff the destination certification CISP mind maps playlist that was also really good and then a video that was really recommended i think on discord was this kelly handernan and that is why you will pass the CISP exam that was quite good because it teaches you just the mindset and that is the biggest thing to CISP exam it's understanding all of the knowledge but it's just a mindset a security mindset and from a very high leadership level Two other things I did from the very start was to join a Discord group and that was the certification station. Really, really good. And I also joined Reddit. So I was very active on the different communities. To give you an idea of step-by-step -step of the things that I did. Um, so I did my exam on the 4th of April and I started studying on the 1st of January and I'd give myself three months solid study time just to be properly prepared for the exam. So. If I start off in January, the first thing that I did is I went through all of the LinkedIn learning course. I just watched it start to finish. And then I bought all these books, um, I joined the different Discord groups and Reddit, and then I planned my exam date, and then I scheduled my study time. So I always try to plan my exam date around the very start because otherwise time will drag on and drag on and I will never have an actual finished date so if I plan the exam date and even book the exam right after starting then at least I know I have, I have an end date and I sort of put a bit of pressure on myself to, to properly prepare. Moving into February I watched the CISP Mike Chapel course again the whole way through only this time I would watch each section of the course and I would write down loads of notes exactly what was happening and then at the end of each domain I would read the domain chapter in the book as well so that way I was watching all of the information and then anything that I didn't know I'd make in my notes or I needed to read up and I would make sure I read everything on that domain in the book. I also started to watch the Mike Zerber 8 hour exam cram. I did it over two days. I just watched four hours one day and four hours the next day. Made loads of notes as well and I also downloaded the Learns app so this is when I officially started doing the practice tests and practice questions. Moving into March I really had upped the ante in my studying. I was doing like four hours studying every single day. Um, I started to read more of the books. I did the uh, Pete Zerger um, 8 hour exam cram again. I was doing hundreds and hundreds of practice questions every single day and following up and making notes. All the questions I got wrong I was making notes and reading the chapters in the book as well. I also found I'll try and find it again. I found this document online, it was the CISP Memory Palace and it was somebody's study notes from the time they had done their exam. Now it was a little bit out of date but it was actually, it was really good because it broke down each of the domains and it was very short little notes and it was a very easy way to quickly learn and understand all the different topics. If I can find that I'll link it below. I'm not sure who owns it but I'll try and find it and link it anyway. In the April, it was three or four days before my exam, I read the 11th hour CISP book, so that is just to teach you mindset. And then I also watched the other videos like Kelly Handanen is why you will pass the CISP exam. And then I went through some of the mindset videos on destination certification. I, again, was still doing practice tests on the Learns app. 
I had finished doing individual questions and I was focusing on 125 question exam tests and that was really just to teach me to be able to sit for three hours and just go through all of this exam and to try and manage my time per question. And that was it. It was the day before the exam and then I just completely rested, had a good night's sleep and got up the next day and I just went and done the exam. I would say definitely the day before your exam is just to rest and relax. Um, I've seen a lot of people in Discord were saying that the day before the exam they just had a beer, sat, relaxed because if you don't know everything you need to know the day before the exam then realistically there's no point stressing on the night before because you're not going to learn it anyway. But that's it, that's everything I used to pass my exam on my first attempt. A few tips for me, I would say you need to have a lot of different resources. Um, if you read about a, a particular topic, say you watch the video course on a domain then follow up with the book or follow up with the online notes or even go to Discord or Reddit and ask questions or I think the more questions you ask and then the more you work with different communities then the better you're going to you know get this knowledge inside your head thank you so much for watching i hope it's been good i hope this has been helpful especially if you're going to do your CISP exam in 2024 it is it's probably one of the hardest exams i've actually done and that's because there's not much there's no hands-on technical things it is just pure theory it's pure knowledge and reading and I kind of like to build apps, so I definitely thought it was pretty hard. But look, if you have liked the video, then you know consider subscribing. If you know other content that will help people pass their CISP in 2024, then drop it in the comment box below. I will link all of the different books and courses and apps that I have and I've used and put them in the description below. And thank you so much for watching.